right guys, we're back in the shop. Uh, we just got back from our Washington VDR run and had a great time there, minus all the things that broke. And speaking of things that broke, we have to work on the Razor. So um, we have the Razorback off-road, uh, full windshield, roof, and rear windshield, and rack. Um, those things added a lot of weight to the, to the unit. We never really had time since we were putting shocks on on the trail to preload everything correctly. So if you look back here at this at the squad on this thing, it's uh, it's real and it's not even loaded up right now. So uh, we gotta adjust the preload springs. Um, I need to take the roof off because it developed a rattle uh, over the last trip and never took the time to, I didn't even remember, I was just so busy working on stuff to put uh, the stripping under the roof. So I'm gonna take that off and redo that so we don't have rattle on the trip. Um, other things, uh, we have pretty sure we've solidified a sponsor to run new tires and rims on the car. So back there you have the big horns that uh, come on the, on the stock on the Razors, those are 29s. And uh, we actually ended up running the trip on these tires and wheels, uh, the original Polaris uh, 14s with uh, these 28s from Discount Tire. Anyways, we ran the trip on these uh, 28s and uh, they're very much a, a square profile. And uh, what ends up happening is that when you're taking the corners uh, at speed, uh, eventually you're gonna roll that corner and then it feels like it's throwing you over. So that is not preferable. Uh, it's uncomfortable. So we can't wait to bring our new partner on board and we're excited to tell you guys about that. Uh, probably next week. So just a little bit of a follow-up on the Razorback setup. This cage was perfect. Um, kept everything inside, having the tanks on the sides and wherever you wanted to mount different things uh, came really handy and worked out really well. Um, so look forward to the full review on that once we get back from all of our trips and finish all the content around that. What else do we got? We got a big mess to clean up, as you can see. Navigation, let's take a look at navigation. All right, so this is what you can see as just the standard RAM tablet mount. Uh, this is secured by way of a, an arm back here. So you can see how that mounts there. So this is the longer arm and the one inch ball. And uh, this is actually mounted to the T-bar mount on the Razor. So let me take this all the way off. And what you can see here is actually um, a product from Tech 208. So this is an American made product out of uh, Idaho. And as you can see uh, back here, I'm using the stock pin that comes on the T-bar mount and that holds it on. And then there's this little adjustment here to create uh, friction on the actual T-bar so you can make adjustments you have to take the pin out to move it in and out. But this will actually give you a tightness adjustment to um, take the rattle out of the bar. But you can see that it has a one inch rim ball on the end of it. And there's two different versions of this. There's a short stubby and a long one. And the long one's really kind of meant for the 2019 body refresh on the Polaris Razors to get over the dash changes. So on this older style, the 16, um, this doesn't really stick out too far on the dash and you don't really need the longer ball, but I found that having it out further was really helpful. So um, so basically you can run your T-bar in here and still have the passenger have a grab handle. Uh, I chose to take it off for our trip. So once you get the ram arm on there, you can position this thing wherever you want. Now, one thing I did notice, um, is that you're kind of limited to the ram design um, on these these cuts here so you can only angle the arm based off of those angles but for the most part you're able to move this all around and make it fit your needs um, being down low you know and and over here by the driver's side you are blocking you know your right hand side switches but uh, if you use just switches that you don't use often like reverse lights, cab light, cabin lights, um, things like that. You basically just turn them on and you're not turning them on and off all the time. 
But uh, the Tech 208 mount was perfect, and I, I didn't put the T-bar in because I wanted all the space accessible for storage. So um, yeah, uh, more in-depth review coming on that. Check, check them out at Tech 208. And uh, it's been working good for, for us so far. Looking forward to finalizing that long-term review on the Idaho BDR. All right, so this is the new battery for the turbo. And this is a full throttle FT560L. And this is a direct AGM battery replacement for multiple machines, including the Polaris Razor Turbo. You got a 44 amp hour battery and uh, that's gonna be considerably more than your Polaris stock OEM battery. Um, these have tons of cranking. Uh, these have tons of longevity. They uh, will hold their ability to recharge a lot longer than any other brand. And it's a great solution for these off-road rigs because it's a sealed system. You can mount it upright, you can mount it sideways, upside down, however you feel the need. And because it has the M8 hardware, they include the standard posts, so you can install those and clamp right into your system, or you can do the M8 hardware and make custom uh, fabrication stuff for your whole rig. So that's going in. We're gonna do a full dual battery setup tutorial video scenario thing later, but for this trip, we're just wanting to get a more reliable battery in the car, have more amp hour to draw off of for our accessories, and uh, we'll come back after that trip We'll clean the car out. We'll do a full dual battery setup with isolator and bus bar and all that and kind of go through those details with everybody. All right, so this is what we're taking out. This is the factory OEM Polaris lead acid battery. Um, as you can see, we've had to do some trail fixes here with the terminal. Uh, the factory one failed uh, and we also have three direct tie-ins plus an accessory wire so um, over time when you bu bundle them up too much uh, that creates too much stress creates a fracture down the vertical surface of that connection and it'll fail so we ended up going to like O'Reilly's or something picking this up it had a accessory terminal already on it uh, this is all coming out uh, for this trip we're going to leave the wiring as it is but replace the battery when we get back we're going to take this clean this all up put bus bars and an isolator in and hopefully a second battery over here so uh, don't kill us we know this is not perfect we're going to fix it we're going to take you along for the ride uh, but for now we're just getting rid of this lead acid piece of crap Using factory sucks. Try to find yourself a quality bracket. Uh, we'll let you know which one we find. Just a quick comparison of the OEM battery next to the new full throttle FT560L. You can see that it's a little bit shorter. The posts are about another inch further down. Um, full throttles don't come with a handle stock. Uh, which is fine with me because that's uh, just more things in the way. You can see that the uh, 560L is a direct replacement when it comes to size, but it is a little bit smaller in depth, uh, in width and height. One thing that you should be aware of is that with the OEM battery, you have top mounted posts that are fairly flush with the top and you can get to it from kind of like any angle that you come with any kind of wires on the side or whatever on the full throttle batteries uh, they are set down a little bit but the posts do come up quite a bit and you should be able to secure to them without a problem and then simply route the wires down the side or around eventually we're going to take these and get actual uh, terminal blocks to have it multiple pieces come in but um, for now we're just going to utilize the included brass posts and uh, keep her nice and clean all right so you can see i got the battery in there um, you can see that i've had to 
change the battery from the post being towards the door to being towards the center console. And I had to then thus flip the positive and negative wires, but they all tucked in nice and neat. There is a lot of space given around the full throttle battery once you take the OEM battery out. The OEM battery fills in that gap a little bit more, so you are going to be saving a little bit of space that way. The bracket is too tall for this battery, so if I put the bracket in here, it's not going to do any good because the battery can still move around. So I may tuck some foam in here and keep that from vibrating too much, but honestly with how heavy a battery is and how tight the compartment is with the foam on the corners, it ain't going to move with the wires connected and all that. So we'll just leave it there as it is for now. And then when we get back and are ready to dig into finishing the wiring on this machine, we'll bring you back along for the ride of pulling this all out again, cleaning up the wire mess and uh, making this thing top notch. All right, so we uh, didn't really cover it a whole lot, but we put a fuse and relay box in this turbo and we did a whole bunch of wiring back underneath the hood, uh, underneath the dash to facilitate six channels of switched power. Um, but during the process, we broke the terminal off of the Polaris bus bar. After four years, the, uh, the primary terminal decided to quit and you can see that we may have had an arc or two over the years. But uh, we put a temporary bus bar in to manage that power. Uh, but we also just picked up a OEM replacement. So this will be going back into there. That'll be coming out. That main power lead will go back to the bus bar. And then we'll clean up this little blue wire that's making it all work. So this is the fuse relay box that we made for the last trip. And then all the wiring is done just behind the wall here. And then all the wires are then bundled and through the firewall out into under the dash and then everything is bus barred from there. But just wanted to show you what we did there. And you can see we got our rock, lies, rock lights on there, our front cubes on there, side cubes, light bar, rear cubes, whips. And uh, we have it wired in a one, two, three, four, five, six fashion. And up here on top, because the way it wires, we have it uh, wired one, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, so what we did, just to make sure we don't forget that, is we just put that labeled inside of the cap so you can know exactly where uh, everything is assignment wise. Um, but you can see that the cap on this has a gasket to keep it waterproof. And as you can see inside, and you can see outside, uh, it never got dirty or wet in there. So worked out pretty well. And uh, this kit comes from an Amazon store called Online LED Store. And they sell a whole bunch of like accessory electronic stuff. And uh, you can check them out there. They're really super affordable. They're at least half or a third of the price of the Blue Sea components. And if you're just looking for a basic setup that'll make things work, uh, I recommend it. Uh, but I think we might even do a tutorial uh, discussing the differences and um, what you can do to make your own. So look for that one in the future. All right, so we have the shop cleaned up, ready to start working on the turbo. What we're gonna do is we're taking all these uh, discount tire wheels off and uh, we're gonna be putting on a new sponsor's set of wheels and tires. Uh, I'm not going to go back to the big horns, I'm going to leave those off for now. But I uh, need to do that. We need to replace the driveline uh, bearing caps and tees and the carrier bearing. Um, and so what we're going to do is take all the wheels and tires off, put it up on jack stands so that we can then have easier access to the driveline, and then take the driveline out and start doing all that repair. So, uh, And then it'll be ready for new shoes come next week. What's going on here? What? What's going on? Taking a look at the clutches from the last trip, see if there's anything that we need to address on the X3. Belt looks decent, but I don't see anything wrong there. And you know, those sheaves, we'll see how dirty they are, but a little bit of dust in there. Plus, the, uh, the car just feels slow and sluggish right now, so I figured we'd check the belt. 
yeah, it's always good to check it after a big ride anyway, so. Get in there. Yeah. Well, I've seen worse. A little milky. Doesn't smell the best. No, that stuff never does. Yep. What's going on, Ian? So, some idiot at Can-Am decided to torque my oil drain plug to probably about 110 foot pounds. Somewhere <laughs> in, there. in the process of getting it to pop loose, my little reason there's a bunch of paper towels here because we use a paper towel uh, cardboard center. Funnel? My mom calls them a dut dut. Because <laughs> it can make horn noises and stuff through it. Uh, it slipped out and now I get to go from here to go get a whole bunch of contact cleaner and spray all over the, uh, the uh, skid plate and all that kind of stuff and clean this thing out. I think I got some brake clean we can use. Yeah, I don't want to pollute your environment. I'll pollute my environment. <laughs> so. so here is uh, here's after 600 to 700 miles. I think we're at 700. I don't see a lot in the way of metal in there. Looks pretty good. Not too bad. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Now pretty... that's only one of two, right? Uh, well, we have another one, but it doesn't have a magnet on it. Oh, so it's on the front side. Yeah. So I'm yeah, happy with that. Not too bad. Yeah, not too bad. So I didn't I didn't buy an oil change kit. I made an oil change kit, and as you can see right here, we got our extra drain plug washer. And here's why I decided to build my own oil change kit is because when I asked the parts guy if he had an oil change kit for a 2019 Can-Am X3RC, he asked me if it was a Can-Am, and naturally I told him it was a uh, a Triumph Scrambler. <laughs> so, so needless to say, my, my faith was shook. We won't say uh, what dealership that was at. We won't say what dealership, yeah, but uh, it looks like we're kind of on the, on the right path. I mean, we're looking good. It looks about, we're looking good. It looks about right. Yeah. Just eyeballing this, I'm pretty sure that's the right one. But nonetheless, yeah, double check. So now you've, you've drained your diff, your rear diff, your trans? Uh, rear diff is done. Conflicting information online. Online, you'll see uh, the, the manual says it takes, I think it's like 42 ounces, 44 ounces. I think it's 42. Don't go off that. Uh, reference your manual. Online, there's guys that are putting in 54. So I don't know if they were filling it on an unlevel surface. I don't know if they were if they weren't running it. I don't know if they were at a candid angle or something like that. But I think they might have been sipping a little bit of what they're putting it, in. Well, but it also could have been combined. It could right. have been the front and the rear. But uh, nonetheless, uh, the 42 that was the OE spec put me at the bottom of the full line. So yeah. We're gonna we're gonna let that sit for a little bit. We're gonna run it. I'm gonna go up and down the block. Let it sit for about 10, 15 minutes, and then recheck everything. Yep. So, so a lot of the guys that are going on the Idaho BDR trail are uh, taking some of these Mountain House uh, meals that are uh, you just rehydrate them with hot water and then uh, eat them on the trails. These are a few of the ones that I'm taking to try out. So I brought a whole bunch home to test. We got chicken fried rice. We got Southwest um, skillet. We got chicken teriyaki, and I've only bought one of these breakfast skillets because I figured. Rice is probably a lot easier than eggs to accomplish. So I just had this one cooking. Should be ready to taste and uh, gonna try it out. It's uh, still a little bit watery, but it smells good. Take our first bite. Well, it doesn't taste horrible. It's got sausage, some egg, some potato. It's not the worst thing I've put in my mouth. I've put worse things in my mouth before. Let's see what you think. It smells good. It looks good. Let's see how it tastes. It's actually, that's really good. Not too bad? No, not at all. Would you be upset if that was what you were eating camping? I would be upset if it was gone while I'm camping. <laughs>